morning guys how are we all doing welcome back to my channel it's the grayest day it's so gray like the light is just so gray it's really very unattractive hello grumpy chops um how are we all doing it is a saturday i was looking forward to my little lane you know you guys know how much i like a little sleep and um not much you know half an hour or something this person she wasn't having any of it this morning i woke up to her digging um, and she does dig occasionally. She's not, you know, every now and then when she gets a bit grumpy, she digs. Anyway, this this was this was angry digging. This was very angry digging because she like she was digging at a good pace, and then she'd do some really fast angry digging, and then she'd go back to kind of normal digging pace, and then she'd do some more angry digging. And I was thinking, oh my god, okay, I have to get out of there because I'm obviously right next door, so I can hear her clearly. That's like it's driving me insane hearing her. Um, so turns out I didn't feed her enough last night, and she needed me to know about it. Now, the thing is, she started looking a bit fat again. So we went through two bales of haylage that was something wrong with it. It just wasn't the richest or the nicest haylage. And they were a bit fussy about it, my guys. So they didn't eat as much. And they were just a bit, like, picky with it. And she actually lost a bit of weight, which was a good thing. And then the bale I've just opened is a lot richer. And she's put all her weight back on again. Typical girl, like, you know, only has to eat some richer food for a couple of days. And she's blown out again, haven't you, dear? Anyway... I then thought, well, I need to reduce a little bit of how much she's eating. My vet saw her the other day as well. I was like, oh, she's looking a bit porky again. I was like, I know. So anyway, reducing a little of what she was eating. Wow. She noticed that I had reduced her food and, you know, I needed to hear about it. I was like, I'm, I came out and I get, like, gave her her feed and she was just so angry. Her little face was like, I'm starving. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I know you're really hungry. And she just like, she, she cracks me up. I mean, it's one of the nice things about having a male. I know they're like, they can be demanding, but... Oh, she just makes me laugh sometimes in the morning because she was just so cross with me that I, like, had fed her less. How dare I? Anyway, she's had some feed. And then even after her feed, she was still like, oh, I'm still really hungry. So I was like, okay, I'll get you some haylage now. And she was like, oh, my God. She was, like, shoveling it in like she hadn't eaten for days. Now, she still had haylage last night. She just didn't have the normal quantity. The joys of having a mare. They're such fun. <laughs> such fun. Anyway, we're going to do some pole work with her today. She's had a couple of fun days where I've just allowed her to be free in the arena and gallop around and get rid of some energy. I think I might have put it in my last vlog. Um, but today we need to do some proper work. And I'm going to go and put you in first because this numpty, me, uh, didn't go to work yesterday afternoon. Because I was like, do you know what? I'll do it on the weekend. It's fine. It's fine. Knowing full well that the moment the weekend arrived, I would not want to go to work. And it, it was a foolish mistake. And I should have just gone yesterday afternoon. Uh, but yeah. So now I'm going to have to go to work. But when I get back, we'll do some in-hand pole work with my dad. And hopefully she'll have eaten a bit and she will be less cross with the world. So before I get into my in-hand pole session with Sienna, look at this new bit of kit that I've got. This is from a really kind and very generous client at Christmas. Um, it's remote control. So hopefully when I am working Sienna here, I can move this by a little remote so hopefully means I don't have to move things around as much I haven't quite got the hang of it entirely I need to still understand it a bit better uh, but it might even be possible that I could like put it in the middle and like it because it moves this all moves around um so we're gonna have a play with this as well today which is exciting and see if we can make the footage look a little better because <laughs> that would be good that would be very helpful indeed so here are my four favorite in-hand pole exercises that I like to do with Sienna and any horse to be honest so first up, you can see that I've got my poles set out in the shape of a cross. I've got them raised at one end and I'm just getting Sienna to walk on a circle around me over the poles. Now, obviously having them raised just means your horse has to lift a little bit more, which is good for them and a bit more of a workout for them and more for their core strength and engaging those hindquarters. This exercise is good because obviously you're working on your horse's bend while also kind of really lifting and stepping through with that inside hind. You can make it harder and the circle tighter by having them kind of the horse closer to you so doing the kind of inside of the poles and then make it slightly easier by doing more of the outside of the poles so Sienna's very distracted this day uh, you'll see throughout this video she spends most of the time wanting to just stop and stare um, and I like this exercise because like I say it really works on their suppleness so I can make sure sometimes I use my hand and I'll just slightly press her on the side just to help get a bit more shaping through her body I'm looking for kind of a neutral head carriage she does often quite like to drop her head and neck down she often likes to investigate the poles also i like them to take their time with any of this pole work i like them to take their time i really don't rush them because they've got to think about where they're putting their feet so here i just do a bit of a figure of eight with two 
fairly raised poles now so obviously the more raised a pole is especially in walk the more your horse is going to have to lift if they're just trotting over a raised pole it's not really the same as having to walk over a raised pole so the more time they've got their leg up in the air as they're stepping over it the more they're having to balance themselves the more they're having to engage their core so again just a nice simple figure of eight or me you could do whatever you fancy really you could do a couple of circles and just gently allowing her to take the time and stepping over the pole and again this is something i do quite often with sienna i find it's easier to do one large raised pole rather than like a line of them where she tends to get a little bit more likely to try and trot or jump them or something like that. Next up, and you may have seen this on my channel before, but I called it the chevron or you could call it the arrows pole exercise. I normally like to do at least three of them in the row, but I was lacking in space. And I do, if I'm going to do in-hand pole work, I quite like to do it as kind of like circuit training with the horse so you can keep moving from exercise to exercise. Because sometimes when it's all done in walk, they can get a little bit bored, a little distracted. And sometimes it's better to keep moving from exercise to exercise. So I like to set out all four so that I can keep moving around them. So you can see here, what's great about these kind of arrow shaped poles is there's quite a few different things you can do with it. So you can obviously go up and down the middle. You can go across them as I'm doing right now with Sienna. You can sort of do a circle around the little corner. You can do a bit of serpentine. Um, I quite like the kind of crossing over effect that you can see I'm doing here. And it's really good to get that change of bend, especially while they're walking over the pole. You want to sort of get them to lift and change bend. That's all really good for them. But again, this is really good if you've got a horse that's rehabbing. Maybe if you, you know, aren't getting a chance to ride your horse as much in winter because of the light and you don't have huge amounts of time, this can be really good for them. And, you know, doing pole work in walk is so beneficial for them. So yeah, this one I do like this, like, I say because there's so many different options. And finally, the simplest pole layout you'll ever find, just a line of poles. This exercise would be better if they were raised. However, I'd already used all my polypods and my blocks on the other exercises, so we had to go for the easy version. Now, with this line of poles, you can do circles over them, you can do serpentines, you can do very shallow loops. So here, I'm just doing a few circles with her, just because she's quite distracted, as you've seen um, in this training session and I just wanted to get her listening to me again you can see I just put my hand on her side just to help get that kind of bend through her body just getting her to drop her head and neck down a little bit and just be a little bit softer and calmer with her movement and then here you can see I'm just doing these shallow weaves and what's good about this exercise is you kind of want them to be bending and changing direction as they go over the pole so you get even extra lift from them and um, that's a particularly good exercise to do with them and obviously you can just go keep coming up and down which is quite nice as well Again, just keeping a very steady, balanced rhythm, keeping the walk in a kind of nice, even rhythm. And yeah, it's just it's just an easy exercise to do. And also, you don't have to have tons of poles, um, which is quite nice because not everybody has, you know, 20 odd poles to play around with. So kind of three or four works perfectly well over this exercise. But yeah, raise them. If you've got blocks or even jump wings, try and raise them because that makes it that little bit harder and a little bit more effective when it comes to improving your horse's core strength and their supple and their kind of overall muscle development. If you happen to have a horse a little bit like Sienna who is easily distracted or gets a bit bored when it's just walking and poles, then I recommend doing something in between each pole section. So do a set of poles and then maybe do something like a little bit of rein back with your horse, a little bit of turn on the forehand, that kind of thing. And then go to the next set of poles. And then here, I just like to stand her and I like to just put a little bit of pressure on her neck muscle and just get her to soften and drop her head and neck down a little bit. As you can see, she's very easily distracted distracted and so it's quite nice to have these quiet moments where I just try and get a bit of connection with her get her to listen to me get her to just relax a little bit and um, sometimes easier said than done and then I'll move back on to the next pole exercise and I just find that way she's a little bit more focused and she tends to do the poles a little bit better <laughs> 